Hi, this is John McCarthy, and this is the install portion of our video for the Pro Dally Smart Wraps. We're going to be installing today our most popular wrap, which is our uh, Blue Viper Generation 7. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and start with what I've got on the saddle horn. I'm going to unwrap it and lay it out, and we'll go from there. And in unstalling, I want you to go ahead and notice a couple key points here. If I've worn my wrap out and it's finished, this is how long it takes me to clean my saddle horn completely to the core. And I've got my rubber off my saddle horn. So it's really quick. You're in a rope and you destroy it. It's getting cut underneath. The rope's starting to get underneath the rubber. It's time to change the thing. It's already saved you enough on your ropes uh, to get the thing replaced. Second step I want to do is I want to talk about the design of the new Generation 7 wraps. They look a little bit different. You'll know that you have a Generation 7 wrap, the newest one, because there'll be one hole here. And there's also going to be a scalloped area in the wrap right here. This scalloped area is the area of the wrap that used to travel right down the back of the saddle horn that a lot of healers would cut really soon, maybe five, ten runs into the use of the wrap, and they would think that it would damage it beyond use. It wasn't the case at all, but it was a visual impairment. So that's what we've trimmed out here to give it a better fit around the right side of the, uh, of the saddle horn down on your swell. So when installing the wrap, you want to go ahead and lay it out on your saddle, the keeper hole to your right, the single hole to, to the left. You want the, the concave, the arc shape right here, that little half moon cut, whatever, facing towards you the wide section of the wrap facing away from you. You simply lay it out in your saddle, you take the little hole, you put it over your saddle horn, I put it right there dead center, just like that. Then I simply am going to take an approach to wrapping my saddle horn much like a calf roper would tie a calf. My left hand is going to do what? It's going to hold, hold, hold. My right hand is going to wrap, hold, wrap, hold, wrap, hold until I finish off the wrap. So if you take that approach to putting on your saddle horn wrap versus trying to use two hands, free hands, it'll be much more successful. I'm sure everybody who's ever watched calf rope and could imagine if you weren't able to hold the left legs with your, with your left hand and wrap with your right, how hard it would be to tie a calf. It's equally as hard to put on a saddle horn wrap if you try to use two hands. So I start by just taking the wrap here in my right hand. I fold it towards myself. I come around the left side of the saddle horn and I place my thumb on it. I go around the front of the saddle horn. I get to twist out and I always stretch a little bit and then wrap. On my first wrap around, I'm going to do a half fold to my wrap. This is to create some shape and undulation to the back side of the saddle horn, as well as if I get to the end of my wrap's life and I'm in the middle of a roping and I have to finish it up, I'll go back and take this half fold out, which will flip my wrap inside to out, bottom to top, give me enough rubber to maybe make another 10 or 15 runs, and then change it out when I finish the roping. So I'm going to go ahead and do my half fold. And on my, on my heel saddles especially, I put it down in the lower one third of the saddle horn. And on this left side, it creates a little bit of a trough there at the base of the left horn, which I lay my rope in as I start my dally, and I tend to get a better bite, I feel, from doing that. I continue to work the twist out the end. I continue to stretch and then wrap, stretch and then wrap, move my thumb and then put my thumb back up to hold it. Again, my left hand is doing nothing but holding it. It's just like tying a calf. You stretch and do everything with your right hand, and then you do everything else with your left. This wide section of my wrap is now starting to show up on my saddle horn, and it's starting to seal off the saddle horn. And you notice here when we come around, this wide lip goes all the way down on the swell, a complete seal all the way around. When you're using this wrap, if you get to the point where you've worn this area completely out and sawed it off, it's time to change the wrap out. Don't try to make the wrap last longer than it should. Um, like I said, I guarantee money back that each one of these wraps will save you a minimum of one rope. If I save you at least one rope, in most cases, I'm not going to joke, it's three to five ropes sometimes. Um, it's going to go ahead and pay for itself many times over. So when you implement this into your roping program, keep in mind too, it's not only going to probably cut your rope bill in half, it'll be paid for from day one. So when you come around this left side, we then just slip the big keeper hole down in the gullet of your saddle, pull it out the front like that. And then we're going to come up over the saddle horn. One thing I want to stop and talk about here before we do the finishing step is the fit on the saddle horn. If I'm heading, I can go ahead and have this thing on here where it's pretty snug. Healing, I need the outer layer loose so it can pooch and twist and bubble up a little bit over here to the right. Um, and so how I adjust that, like this right here is nice and loose. You can see a little, bit, a little bit of movement there in the front of the horn. That'd be great for healing. If I wanted it a little bit snugger and nicer fit, say for a head horse, only thing I'm going to change is I'm going to go back into the wrap a few layers, relax where I stretched it a bunch, and just stretch it a little bit less. And it's going to shorten the overall ending of my wrap. So now when I come around the saddle horn here, it's good and tight, and there's no play or no pooch right there. So I just wanted to show you that and let you know on the heel side you want a little bit of movement. 
And uh, I've been asked many times why we want movement, why we want that outer layer loose. And really the best analogy that I've been able to come up with is if you think about a drag race car and the sidewalls on their tires, uh, those cars, they heat up their tires so they stick better. And then what they do is they, that tire twists, wrinkles, wads up, absorbs the energy, and then launches the car. In healing, we take a very, very sharp hit, just like the launch of a car. And if a car's tires spun because they were hard, um, there'd be no, obviously, leaving the hole and being quick down the racetrack. So they use soft, pliable walls in their tires. Healing, we want that outer layer soft and pliable so as it grabs the rope and starts to bite, it absorbs the energy slowly, similar to anti-lock brakes. Anti-lock brakes are designed to stop the tires from skidding. Twist and absorption help stop the rope from running. So that's one of the reasons you want the outer layer loose. You have to tend to it a little bit, but it's not that big a deal. So we're going to take the big keeper hole over the front of the saddle horn now. And then what we do here on the left side is I just flip this up a little bit. I take my lower lip here. I pull it up. Kind of like that. I hold it with my right thumb. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull out away from the saddle horn, just like this, until it comes over that lip. I'm not going to pull downward. Once I get it over that lip, I'm just going to lay it down. It's going to seal off the entire left-hand side of my saddle horn. The right side, I'm going to pull away from the horn, get it laying down flush, and that would finish off my saddle horn. I'd be ready to go rope right there. Okay? Again, one of the things I want to talk about is the, the coming over the front. I'm going to back up here. We're going to take this off unspin it and you're going to see again how we're going to do this get all the twists out of our wrap i'm going to do this all at one stage now concave area is facing towards me wide lips facing away two soft green bands blue over the top of the horn i fold it towards me come around with my left thumb you can see my thumb working here a little stretch in a wrap do my half twist put it down low and really all i'm doing is moving my thumb down and going past my thumb, putting my thumb back up to hold it. I never let go with my left hand. Just like a calf rope or a tie calf. If you take two hands and try to make it happen, it will be quite the ordeal. We're going to go ahead and come out the front. When we come out the front, I purposely wrap this a little tight because what I wanted to show you is this. If you wrap it and it's too long, it's going to come up past the front of this lip and it's gonna go easily over the horn, but it's not gonna finish off well. So we want this lip down here close, about right there. So I'm about two inches too long. And again, how I adjust that is not here at the end, but we'll go back in the wrap, relax it just a little bit, do the whole exact same process, but in the process, I'm gonna stretch it just a little bit less. It'll take you a couple times to find out how it fits into your saddle. It'll take you more than a couple times if you try to use two hands. So now I'm going to come around here, seal it off again. I'm going to go down through the gullet. Pull it out the front. Now when I come up here on this one, notice I'm right there. I'm just a hair bit long in the front of that lip. Not much, just a tiny bit. So I'm going to go ahead and go back. Just relax half inch somewhere in here, right about here. Relax that a little bit and then rewrap my horn. And this will finish it off. Give me a perfect fit this time. And usually after you do your own saddle horn, I could have done this correctly the first time if I'd wanted to, but I'm just trying to show a couple of different things. When you get it down through the gullet, pull it out a little bit, relax it back, go over the top of your saddle horn, halfway down, we're gonna flip it up. And again, we're gonna take this lip right here on the left, pull it up, we're gonna pull out and over that lip. It's a lot easier to do when it's laying on the ground, or actually I do it a lot of times on my horse. Lay that down, seal it off, and there I'm ready to go rope. One of the good tricks to, to keep track of this, make sure it's done just right for healing, is if you push with your thumb like this, you should be able to get a bubble in here if you're going to heal. It should be loose. And the other thing that's most, most important about this product, you have to understand, is when we design this product, the temperature range of it is much higher than inner tube rubber. And so with that being said, every company waxes their ropes. And when wax creates heat, it melts. Wax is a lubricant. They put it on the bottom of skis. They put it on uh, a bottom of a lot of things, make oil to make them go faster. So the initial wax you have on your rope that seals the crowns, keeps them like from absorbing too much humidity and getting a, a different feel to them, 
before you start roping on our product or any product for that matter, if you build up your loop and your spoke and wherever your right hand is on your spoke, put that area underneath your foot in good dry dirt under the toe of your boot, saw it back and forth and work your way down through the rest of those coils. It's not fuzziness that we're looking for. We want that friction to create some heat under our boot and that dirt to get that excess wax off. So you're dragging around behind your horse on top of the ground where it's bouncing around getting fuzzy, doesn't do the trick. And if it's hot outside, you may have done that to your rope originally and it's sitting in your truck for two or three weeks, you pull it out, it's tacky feeling again. Make sure you take a handful of dirt and rub that area, you dally down again, get that excess wax off your rope. That is gonna make your rope move in times that it never would have moved if it was cleaned off. So that's real, real important. Getting questions on the install of this, watch it again. If not, contact us at our 800 number, which you'll find on our website at ropesmart.com, and we'll be glad to walk you through it if we need to, right over the phone. So we'd like to thank you for your time today. Um, hope you enjoy the install video. There's also the product video you can watch as well. Um, hope to see you down the road, and in the meantime, we're hope you're roping smart.